In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My name is Father Celso, and we continue with the new era. And uh, Jesus begins with this. This is why I am. He uses the title, I am God. I am. This is why God is preparing the era of living in, of the divine will, in God's most holy divine will. For all that the creatures have not done in the past generations, everything, this is all the old, the, the, uh, the people of the Old Testament, all the people of the New Testament, what all have not done in the past generations and will not do in this era that's coming, this era of the most holy divine will, they will complete the love they will complete the glory. They will complete the honor of the whole of creation. And I, God, will give them astonishing and unheard of graces. This is Jesus' promise of the new era that's coming. And it's on earth, not after we die. May your kingdom, with me, our Father, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, that's what's coming. So what is this new era about? It's to complete the love, the glory, the honor of all of creation, all that God created with the fiat lux and redemption, all that happened with Our Lady's fiat mihi. Now, with the fiat voluntas tua, now, a new era has beginning for the souls that um, have been given the book of heaven. Now, it's not for many at this time. Why? As Bethlehem wasn't for many at the time of Bethlehem. Who showed up at Bethlehem? It was the shepherds. It was the, it was the uh, wise men. Very, very few came to greet Christ the King. Right now, Jesus says, I, God, am preparing, preparing the world for this new era of what? Doing the will of God? No, more than that. Living in the will of God. And for, for all that has not been done in the past generations, all that they, the people did not do in the past generations in this new era of God's most holy divine will, the souls, the little children of the holy divine will, hopefully that's us, hopefully, will complete the love, the glory, the honor of the whole creation. And to prove this, to prove this, Jesus says, I will give these souls, the little children of the Holy Divine Will, astonishing and unheard of graces. We haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen anything yet. The, the, the divine healing that's coming is so, is, is so God, is so perfect, is so loving that the world hasn't seen before. What's coming upon the earth is the new era. What's coming upon the earth is heaven. See, we were supposed to live in the Garden of Eden. We were supposed to uh, uh, live this, this paradise that God gave to Adam and Eve. But when Adam and Eve um, failed, when they committed the original sin, what happened at that point? Jesus says, you have to leave paradise. And where did we end up? We ended up here. But what does Our Lady keep on telling us in her apparitions throughout the world? She says two things. Get ready for the return of my son 
and get ready for heaven on earth. The new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. See, everything, God's getting everything ready. He's getting us ready for the kingdom. And he has predestined us, chosen us to live at this time. If, he, if we are born for this time, we have the graces necessary to get through this time. There is nothing to worry about. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to be anxious about. There's nothing to complain about. If we really believe that our God is our God, Jesus is our Savior, he's our King, he's our Lord, he's our Master, if we really believe that, if we really believe Our Lady is the Queen of Heaven and Earth, and we are her children, there is nothing to worry about. Our trust is in Jesus. Jesus, I trust in you. Our hope is in him. Christian hope is certitude. What's coming is um, astonishing, amazing, unheard of graces. So we live not with worry or fear or anxiety or complaints or negativity. And, and avoiding sin. Why? Because God is bringing about a new era, a new era of the living in the divine will. How great our God is, how magnificent our God is, that he is asking us to begin, to begin to live the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary through Louisa, the newborn. So what happens? Jesus and Mary speak to Louisa, ask Louisa through the spiritual director, through Louisa's spiritual director, to write everything down. Why? So that we can read how this is going to happen and why this must happen. And as we begin to read this and study this book of heaven, we are going to see astonishing and unheard of graces right before our eyes. What's coming is magnificent. And, and Jesus says, get ready, get ready for what is coming. Begin to live heaven on earth now before you die. Begin to live this abundant life that Jesus and Mary have given to Louisa. This is a great time. So Jesus says this, this is why I am. Again, he uses the title, I am. <laughs> I am calling you, Louisa, to live in my most holy divine will. Now, what's really uh, amazing about this is uh, to live in the divine will is to live the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary. And when we read the book of heaven, Jesus is saying to us, each and every one of us, I'm calling you to begin to live this abundant life. I'm calling you to begin to live this, this life of the divine will. This is what Jesus is saying. So I whisper into your ear. Okay, now he's going to tell us a prayer. This is why the echo book is so important. The echo book is all the prayers that Jesus taught Louisa. And when we pray the echo book, when we read the echo book, you will hear things like this. Jesus whispering in our ear, Jesus, I lay at your feet the adoration. I put at your feet the subjection of the whole human family. Jesus, I place in your heart the I love you of every person who ever lived, past, present, and future. On your lips, Jesus, I impress my kiss in order to seal the kisses of all human generations. Now, you have to remember, it's, it's the kiss of a mother to the little baby. This is, this, is, this is how Louisa would respond to Jesus, kissing the little baby. And I clasp you, I embrace you with my arms in order to clasp you with the arms of every human being, past, present, and future. 
And I bring to you the glory of all the works of creatures. And I feel in you, Lord, the adoration, the I love you, the kiss, et cetera, et cetera, of the whole human family. So when we pray in the divine will, we pray in the name of every human being, past, present, and future. This is the amazing thing about the divine will. You are, you are praying in the name of every human being, past, present, and future. So this prayer here, which is so amazing, um, this prayer here, God is hearing all mankind pray with your voice. All mankind is before the Lord, because that's what you're saying. I pray in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. I pray that you, Lord, hear all of mankind. So what are we doing? We're standing in the breach as Moses stood in the breach for the Israelites. We do something different. We stand in the breach for all mankind, from Adam to the last person who will ever exist. And we say, Lord, I want to pray in their name. I want, I want all my family who doesn't love you, all my neighbors who don't love you, all my coworkers who don't love you, all, my, all of mankind from, from the beginning to the end. We pray, I adore you, I love you, I praise you, I thank you. And what God hears, I take their place. What God hears is th that all of mankind is now praying with your voice. The church already shows us this. When you're in front of the Blessed Sacrament and you're the only one in church, you represent all mankind. So you kneel before the Lord and say, my Lord, my master, my king, my savior, my God, help us. Forgive us. Have mercy on us. And Jesus says, good. Good. I'm hearing all mankind. And now with the great gift of the divine will, it's more than that. It's, it's to take their place in, in a very powerful way. And this is what Louisa says. How, this is what Jesus says to Louisa. How could I not give you, Louisa, the divine love, the divine kisses, the divine graces that I, as God, should give to all the others as you take their place? Do you see what's happening? It's not about being good and holy and saintly. It's about sharing in divinity. This is what the priest does at Holy Mass every day. He puts the drop of water into the chalice and he says, may we share in the divinity of Christ as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. So think about what Jesus is saying. He says, this is our prayer. The prayer that Jesus taught Louisa. Jesus I lay at your feet the adoration, the subjection of the whole human family, past, present, and future. I place in your sacred heart the I love you of every human being. On your lips, I impress my kiss in order to seal the kiss of all human generations. That's Why do you think the, the Pope kisses the baby Jesus uh, at, at Christmas and Christmas Eve? He represents all mankind, kissing the baby Jesus. I clasp you with my arms. Why? To clasp you with the arms of every human being, past, present, and future. Why? To bring you the glory of all the works of all mankind. And I feel in you, Louisa, Jesus says. Now, the adoration, the I love you, the kiss of the human generations. This is what we're doing. This is glorious. This is unbelievable. How could I not give you, Louisa, the love of God, the kisses of God, the graces of God, which I want to give to all of humanity that doesn't want them? I give them to you, Louisa. So what's happening here is Jesus is getting us ready for this new era, getting us ready for this new um, abundant life with divine prize, divine surprises. So I'll end with a blessing. May the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will. 
that we live in God's holy divine will always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.